Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be going over safety tips and procedures when working with oil paints. So let's get started. First, let's talk about linseed oil. Now, linseed oil is the binder for oil paints and it has a unique reaction to air. As the linseed oil begins to oxidize, a chemical reaction occurs and it begins to produce its own heat. And this is where the danger occurs. When we have oil paints on our rag or on our paper towel, it is at risk of spontaneously combusting, even without a spark, and can catch fire at as low as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to protect our studio from a possible studio fire, there's a few simple steps we should do. First and foremost, never ever fold your rags or crumple them up. This increases your chance of spontaneous combustion, so always make sure they are laying flat. Now, once you have finished with cleanup, you need to store the rags away safely. To do this, you can either hang them up to dry in a safe location, you can leave them outside weighted down with some rocks on a non-flammable surface such as pavement or gravel, or you can do the safest and most highly recommended option, which is to purchase a fire bucket and leave them in that, or make your own fire bucket out of an old empty paint can with a sealable lid. Once these rags are entirely dry, you can then use them again, or you can throw them out. And my only other tip is if you're working with paper towels, you definitely do not want to keep them in your studio and it's best practices to saturate them with water and then either leave them weighted down outside or again, stick them in your fire bucket. Now that we talked about oil paints binder, we should go ahead and talk about the pigments that make up oil paints. Now, many of the pure forms of oil paint pigments such as cadmium are actually really toxic to us and can cause cancer. This is because they are related to the heavy metal family. So one way we can try to combat this is to look for the word hue on our painting bottles. If it says, for example, cadmium yellow hue, that means it was made in a laboratory and is less toxic to us. The second thing we can do is to make sure we're wearing the proper personal protective equipment, PPE. The PPE for oil paints is either gloves or barrier cream. Now, any type of glove will work, just make sure that you are aware of whether or not you're allergic to latex. And if you are truly not a glove person, then I highly recommend Barrier Cream. Barrier Cream is a tacky hand lotion that dries and protects you from touching oil paints directly. Once you're done painting, you can go ahead and wash it off with some soap and water. Now, you will have to be careful when you are cleaning up all of your paints that if you do get your hands wet, that barrier cream will start to dissolve, so you will most likely still have to wear a pair of gloves when cleaning your brushes off, or you're gonna have to be very mindful about touching the bristles. Since we're talking about cleanup, the next thing I want to talk to you about is solvent. Now, whether you're using turpentine, turpenoid, or gamsol, all of these solvents are going to off-gas. That means they are going to release fumes into your studio. So the best practice that we can do to help prevent us from breathing in these fumes is to keep lids on our containers as much as possible. It's also highly recommended that you have some form of ventilation, either an actual ventilation fan or being able to open up a window and placing a fan inside of it. If you do not have any of these options, it is best to paint outdoors so that you're not inhaling all of the off gas from your solvent. The other thing to be aware of is what container you're storing your solvent in. It is recommended to store your solvent in a glass container as this won't create as much of a static charge and will decrease your risk of possible explosion. I mean, we're talking it's a very small risk. Um, if you do decide to use a metal container, that risk slightly increases. So try to keep it in your studio and not move it so much. It's really the shaking motion that can cause that static charge. Now I have both a metal container that stays in my studio and a glass container. And my best suggestion for glass containers is once you purchase one to duct tape 
all the way around your glass container several times and that will protect it in case it accidentally falls off your workstation and ends up on the floor. It should help prevent it from shattering. So to recap, make sure that your rags remain unfolded, hang them up, leave them outside or store them in a fire bucket when you're not using them. Always keep the lid on your solvent to help with fumes. Work in a well-ventilated area. Keep your solvent in a safety container and always make sure to wear PPE, whether that's gloves or barrier cream. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Or if you'd like to see more art education videos or stuff from my own practice, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you next time.